Hi guys, welcome back. This is part two of our mini series on probability. Here we're going to get into complements, unions, and intersections. So let's start with um, the setup here is going to be we're going to let two events, so these are just two arbitrary events, A and B. Okay, so these are just two arbitrary events um, in some chance experiment. Okay, and from these two, we're going to build some important concepts. First, we're going to talk about the complement of an event. So let's start. Let's just use one of these. Let's talk about the complement of A. First off, maybe start with notation. Uh, we can have uh, many textbooks use different notations. So a complement can be expressed a like with an exponent c. I've seen it with a little line, a bar above a, and I've even seen with a prime. Okay, but what is it more importantly? Okay, this is the event not a. So you can think of this as not a. So all outcomes that are in the sample space but not in A. So the event not A consists of all outcomes that are not in event A. All right, so let's vi let me visualize all these um, concepts in this tutorial with Venn diagrams. So again, if you missed the last video, you should go back and watch that. This entire box contains all the outcomes so everything that's possible in this chance experiment is contained in this box. Outside this box, nothing exists Okay, with respect to this experiment. So this is the sample space. I have event A arbitrarily represented by this little circle here. So everything inside this circle is an outcome that's in event A. So event not A or complement of A would be everything outside of this box. So I could shadow, shade that to make it clear. Everything outside of A is not A. So as you see, A and A complement together fill up the entire sample space. Okay, this is an important concept, the concept of a complement. Okay. Two, we're going to talk about union. Okay, so this is expressed with, it's almost like a U, except it's a little stretched out horizontally, okay? And we can say A union B, okay? That's read A union B. Or you can think of this as A or B, okay? And let me read a def good definition of this. This a, a union B are all outcomes that are at least in one of the two events. Okay, so in this case, A and B are the two events. So these are all outcomes that are at least in one of the two. Okay, so let's visualize this. Again, the Venn diagram becomes very useful here. Okay, so remember this is the sample space. Here is event A, here is event B. So I want to shade all the outcomes that are in A union B. So at least all outcomes that are at least in one of the two events. So that means all outcomes in A and all outcomes in B would qualify for A union B. Okay. But of course, if you watch follow the last tutorial, you recall that there's a possibility that A and B aren't separate like this or disjoint, that they in fact could be overlapping like this. In other words, they share in this middle area, they share some outcomes in common. Okay. In this case, so these are two possible scenarios for a chance experiment for or for two events, A and B. Okay. Either that they're disjoint or that they're overlapping like this. In this case, the union would again be all of A 
and all of B, including that overlap. Okay? So that's the union. Next, the concept of intersection. The intersection of A and B is like an upside down stretched out U. Ooh, this got messy. Okay. A, that's read A and B sometimes or A intersect B and these are A and B includes all outcomes that are in both of the events so only outcomes that are in A and in B would qualify here so let's visualize this so here let's start with this scenario so here's all the outcomes that are in A Here's all the outcomes that are in B. Where is A and B? Where are all the outcomes that are in both the events? Well, they don't share any events in common in this picture. So actually I have nothing to shade. Okay? So actually we say that this is empty or the null set here. So A and B would be empty in this case. Okay? How about the scenario where they overlap? In other words, they share some outcomes. So here, clearly we see, for a third time at least, that event A and event B share some outcomes in common. And that's represented in that middle area. And that's precisely what the intersection is. These are the outcomes that are in both A and B. So I'm shading A and B. Okay? Or A intersect B. All right? So it's possible that there is no intersection. There's, it's possible that there is an intersection. It all depends on the logical relationship between event A and B. What arises naturally after I present these three um, concepts is the idea that we've been kind of seeing throughout both these tutorial videos so far in this series the idea of mutual exclusivity or disjointness of events okay so we've already seen this but let's make this a little more formal at least two events that have no outcomes in common are said to be mutually exclusive or disjoint okay So these are synonymous. Okay, so let's visualize this first with the Venn diagram. We've seen this already. So here's A, let's say. Here are the outcomes in A. This is, of course, the sample space. And here's B. A and B, notice, have no overlap, which is indicating to us that they have no outcomes in common. In other words, their intersection is empty is the empty set okay and so we say that these two events are disjoint or mutually exclusive so just to review what we've covered in this video we took two arbitrary events we um, discuss the complement of an event, the union of the two events, the intersection of the two events, and then we naturally um, came to this concept of a disjoint set of events or mutually exclusive events, okay, visually and uh, more analytically here, okay. So if we go back to rolling a die, if I define an event A as rolling a one, two, three, and event B as rolling a th four, five, six, I can say A and B are disjoint because, as you can see, they don't share any events. They have no events in common. 
That's the definition of disjoint events. Sorry, they have no outcomes in common. So that's the definition of a um, disjoint, two disjoint events. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, notice that we haven't even mentioned uh, the word probability. Um, um, we haven't developed it any further. Next video, we're going to actually take all this work that we've done and now swing in um, a quick way to kind of count outcomes and calculate probabilities. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.